Hello there, book people. It's Monday, which means it is the start of another reading vlog here on my channel. Welcome to Books and Tea Time with Adeline. <laughs> A lot of the same books that I was reading last, last week so this is gonna feel a little repetitive and I apologize so we're gonna fly through this but I'm still reading these two for research Byron Biography Amber Spyglass if you want to know more you can watch the beginning of my last two vlogs and I give a little more detail about these two books but essentially I am reading bits and pieces of these for a research project that I'm doing this summer I'm an undergraduate uh, and the research that I'm doing right now is contributing to my uh, senior honors thesis project. So that's that. I have two books for that. And then also, I'm still reading A Blade So Black by L.O. McKinney, Alice in Wonderland retelling, urban fantasy, super whimsical, super hilarious. I am on page 222, so I'm a little over the halfway point. And the first order of business is I'm going to try and finish this tonight. I don't know if I'll be able to finish it uh, all the way, but I'm going to read until I drop. Can't stop, won't stop. Reading all night. So yeah, this is the first and foremost priority for me right now is to read A Blade So Black. I am also in the middle of reading So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijeoma Oluo. I am only like 20 pages into this, but this is going to be my nonfiction read for the week. And it's not too long, so I'm hoping to be able to finish it this week, if not early, early next week, just so I can keep chugging along through my nonfiction um, picks that are about anti-racism so that I can kind of build up my knowledge as quickly as possible so that I can help um, and do my best as quickly as possible. So I'm still reading this, and so far I really do like it. Um, it's a little different in the setup in terms um, compared to how to be an anti-racist by Kendi so I'm already liking how the writing and approach is just a little bit different so that I can get different a little bit of a variety in my anti-racism literature last but not least as soon as I finish a blade so black I am immediately diving in to the rage of dragons by Evan winter so I unbox this at the very end of my previous vlog I got this from the lip bar which is a black owned bookstore in the Bronx and I'm so so excited for this it's um just a quick synopsis it's about a society that is centered around war and battle and there are like some unique magic systems where it seems kind of, kind of like luck of the draw you can get these sort of gifts but a lot of people are born giftless but still have to train um, to have these powers and our main character wants to escape this life of battle and training and warfare and violence and so he has a plan to do that and I don't know there's dragon in the title so literally pfft, I didn't even really need to read the synopsis but there's that if you're curious so I'm really really hoping or I'm really excited to pick this one up soon I think this is gonna be incredible it's a nice beefy fantasy book it's just over 500 pages and it just seems like exactly what I'm in the mood for right now like a little bit of a high epic fantasy some dragons interesting magic system I'm really excited <laughs> just went on a healthy food shop because I'm doing this newfangled wacky thing called eating healthy and exercising. I know, it's so boring. Uh, so I thought I'd give you a quick food haul, food shop haul. I got baked beans, red pepper, pumpkin seeds, two kinds of tea, green, and this honey lavender one, super delicious. I absolutely love it. Coffee creamer. Um, I'm making these like rolled oat pumpkin puree thingies. So I need the rolled oats for that. I got some almond granola for my breakfast smoothie bowls. I needed some spices for a recipe I'm making. Uh, edamame just to snack on. Um, I had this 
over the weekend at my cousin's house in a salad, which I also have right here. This salad is amazing. Sunflower crisp, super delicious. Don't even need all the dressing, it's amazing. So yeah, I really like that. These are also little like snack bites that are really good, really healthy. Um, and I also got snap peas for a recipe, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, mushrooms. I'm gonna try and turn these into burgers tomorrow, I think. So we'll see how that goes. Cucumber, spinach for salad, asparagus for another tofu recipe I'm trying. Did I say mushrooms already? I don't know. Um, flour tortillas because I'm making the these sweet potato and cauliflower tortillas. They're vegan friendly and they're freaking amazing. They're like better than regular tacos. Lemon for lemon water. Iceberg lettuce to go on the burgers and because uh, I'm really weird and I will just eat lettuce straight up off of like the head of iceberg lettuce. Does anybody else do that? Comment down below. Uh, I've got some light wheat bread. I'm also trying these yogurt alternatives made with coconut milk. I have a raspberry and a vanilla flavor, so I'll let you know how that goes because your girl's lactose intolerant. I've got some bananas for peanut butter and banana toast, some blueberries and raspberries, and pineapple just for like fresh fruit to have around the house. Almond milk because again, your girl's lactose intolerant. And I'm also trying this alternative dairy-free butter made with almond oil and then the pumpkin puree for the pumpkin thingies that I'm trying this week. So that's what I bought. We'll see how all these recipes go. Maybe I'll show you how some of them turn out. Morning, everybody. It's Wednesday. I just picked up some coffee for my mom, my dad, and I from one of like our favorite local coffee shops. Um, it's like five minutes from my house. Um, unfortunately, they still don't have what I want. I have been craving a lavender vanilla latte from this coffee shop since April. And at first they were closed because of quarantine and then they were under construction and now they're open but they have a limited menu so they don't have the lavender syrup and I'm just sad. But it's okay. Uh, I got a vanilla latte, just regular instead, and I'm super excited because it's going to be delicious. So I'm going to drink it on the porch probably, have some breakfast, and do some reading. Happy Wednesday. Milo, do you need attention? <laughs> Spoiled little baby, won't even let me read. Isn't that right? <laughs> What's up? Okay, it's a little bit later in the day and I just wanted to come on and say that yesterday, which was Tuesday, I finished A Blades of Black by L.L. McKinney and it was incredible. Absolutely five out of five stars across the board. Characters, world slash plot, to entertainment value, intellectual value, timelessness, my bias, all of it, five out of five. It was amazing. Our main character, Alice, obviously, is so funny and like sarcastic and her humor just really speaks to my humor and I really enjoyed following her and her interactions and how she is sort of the book itself and Alice especially are so aware of how wild and crazy everything is and like it calls attention to and references Buffy and like other pop culture things that I just think are so hilarious and it was just really entertaining. All the characters are really great and it's fun to see like the hints of the Alice in Wonderland traditional characters being presented. Also um, we have a female female romance in this book which is incredible and super cute. Um, I don't think that's a spoiler because I saw this book on a list of like LGBT uh, books by black authors so I hope it's not a spoiler. I don't think it is um, because I didn't tell you who's involved at all. The romance is like all the romances are just kind of like a little angsty, a little steamy but also just really cute and precious so I'm super super excited this is a duology so the second book I think is called a dream so dark and I'm really excited I'm hoping that I can get to a used bookstore soon to pick up the second one even though I told myself yesterday that I was going to stop buying books for the rest of the summer that's obviously not gonna happen 
which is unfortunate for my bank account but you know I gotta know what happens because it kind of leaves off on a huge cliffhanger so yeah it was super funny super whimsical really entertaining incredibly fast-paced and something is always happening there's no like boring lull or backstory time McKinney is really really good at just throwing the reader in there and just taking you on a journey you just go and you have no time to breathe but it's amazing like there's no relaxation and it's in the best way possible and there's a lot of really poignant arguments about the current state of our society as our main character is a young black woman and in the text um I don't believe she knows the person but in the text at the beginning her mom is really concerned about her being out late at night because another young black woman in the community I believe her name is Brion I think that's how you would say it Brion um is gunned down by a police officer so that's really relevant to a lot of current events but the way that she articulates Alice's and her mom's emotions and the complications that it puts in her daily life to have to deal with not only that but have to deal with school and she is dealing with the loss of a loved one but at the same time she's also traveling at night into this world where she's fighting monsters so just it's really wonderful how McKinney articulates a lot of Alice's experiences as a black woman but also as a teen and also as like a secret monster fighter so it's great how she weaves those different components of her identity together and how she interacts with other friends especially her white friends um it's just really interesting and I really loved it so absolutely highly highly recommend especially if you're into retellings if you're into fantasy you'll definitely love this um, it's really great. Alice in Wonderland retelling. I don't think I've ever read another Alice in Wonderland retelling, um, but this one's fantastic. So 100% definitely recommend it. I read like 50 pages, maybe a little over 50 pages of the Byron biography this morning slash early afternoon. And now I am about to play some Pokemon because I'm currently downloading the expansion pass for Pokemon Shield. And Alexander already started playing it and I don't want him to spoil anything for me on accident so I'm probably gonna play that for like an hour or two after I eat some lunch and then I think I'm gonna start Rage of Dragons the Rage of Dragons tonight uh after dinner probably and I might read a little bit of so you want to talk about race after I play some Pokemon so I'll keep you guys updated on what's going on but just wanted to say I finished a book already and it's only Wednesday and technically this vlog started on Monday night so I think I'm going I think it's going pretty well. Okay, it's time for a Pokemon tour. So, um, first things first, uh, when I started to get into Pokemon a few years ago, when, like, Alexander made me download Pokemon Go, I realized that Pokemon are, like, species. I thought that, like, Pikachu was, like, one individual named, like, creature and it turns out that Pikachu was like a species of Pokemon so I thought that it was cruel that none of them got their own names it's like calling your dog dog so I made a vow to always name the Pokemon that I catch um, so that they have individual personality and uniqueness so that's why all these Pokemon have names and all of the ones all 400 that I caught um, in this game have names and all my ones on Pokemon Go have names. Second thing, my top three favorite Pokemon of all time in descending order. C Dot. Um, this is the second evolution of it, Nuzleaf. Uh, C Dot is my all time favorite Pokemon. I breed or I bred breeded bred a shiny one, which took ages, but look at how cute. I have not evolved him into his final form yet or her, sorry, it's a girl, um, because it's just hella cute, and I can't do it yet. Uh, second is Galvantula. I'll explain why his name is Buzz Jr. in a second here. Um, and then third favorite is Sinus T, because I love T. This, if I was a Pokemon, this is what I would look like. Right there. <laughs> um, so anyway, this, these six Pokemon right here are the makings of my perfect team. And originally I built my team around 
this Pokemon Lil Nut because it literally is Lil Nut Acorn thing um, when it's in its first evolution. Um, and so I was going to name them all after nuts um, to have the team, but Buzz was the name of the other Galvantula that I had that basically carried me through the game. So I bred him because his stats were terrible and got a perfect Buzz, so I figured I had to name him Buzz Jr. Um, as a memento of my time. So that's that explanation. So the first one we had, or the first one I did, was Galarian Rapidash. I named it Macadamia. Don't know why. Um, it's freaking gorgeous and super cool. And it fit in my team, so I just started with that one. Um, also, when I played Pokemon Ruby, um, this Pokemon, I don't even, literally, I don't even know what it's called because in my mind I just look at it and I'm like, yep, that's coconut. <laughs> So that's the one downside is I can't remember half of the actual breed names because I give them individual names and then I associate them with that. Uh, but this one's Coconut. This is Shiny Peanut. I didn't, I wasn't actually looking to get a Shiny in this one. It actually just like happened by luck, which I think is amazing. Um, so I was going to originally name it Peanut because of the shape of its head. So I named it Shiny Peanut because I got a Shiny and that's freaking amazing. Super dope. Um, then we have Lil Nut, obviously. It took me forever to get this little shiny boy, but it was my first shiny ever in this game. Uh, actually my first shiny in, like, a Pokemon game that wasn't Pokemon Go. Um, and then Cashew. It'll look more like a Cashew when it evolves. Um, but yeah, so that's my team. I do have a couple backup boys. So originally I had Chestnut in place of Buzz Jr. or Toxtricity. And I named it Chestnut because it, like, plays guitar on its chest. And I thought that was really clever. Uh, these are all the perfect little nuts that I bred um, that were not shiny. So if you need a perfect C dot, I'll be willing to trade. Um, this is my breeding box, which is why I have dittos in here and this thing. Um, but also, uh, Sobble was my starter Pokemon for this game. I don't regret it. I think it's the cutest thing in the world. Um, so I just bred a perfect Sobble for fun. My last shiny, my third shiny, I got this just in the wild like in a wild encounter and i looked at alexander we were on facetime at the time and i was like oh my god i got a shiny crystal and i wasn't even trying uh so those are the three shinies i have hey um going on a bike ride with my mom because i'm doing that whole exercise thing um i hate exercise i'm incredibly lazy so this should be fun Alrighty, I'm back from my bike ride. We went like, I think five-ish miles. It was a little painful because the seat was uncomfortable, but you know, is exercise ever comfortable? Let's be honest. No, it's not. Um, and then after biking, we went to that juice place that I mentioned in the last vlog and I got some cold pressed juices to drink throughout the week. Right now, I am in the process of making dinner, I'm making mushroom burgers. While that's cooking, I am going to play some more Pokemon because guys, I'm addicted and I can't control myself. So instead of reading, I'm gonna play some pokes. So that's the plan right now. And then probably after dinner, I'll do some reading. So that's my update. Exercise sucks. It is Thursday? Yes, it's Thursday. Um, the 18th of June, and I am backing up right now. I am running some errands. I had a really early doctor's appointment this morning. Um, so right now I'm just running errands. I went to Target, got some clothes. Um, my mom and I just went to Bath and Body Works, and now my mom had to go do something else for work so I am on the hunt for a birthday present for Alexander uh, for those of you who don't know or didn't see my first vlog where I introduced him Alexander is my boyfriend my significant other and he's turning 21 on Sunday and usually I pride myself on being an excellent and attentive gift giver. I love giving gifts like Christmas. I'm always excited to give my gifts. I don't know if it's quarantine or just like what's been going on in my personal life lately, but 
I am so unprepared for his birthday this year. He wants me to Venmo him $30 because he already bought the Pokemon expansion pass because it came out yesterday and he couldn't wait. He was really excited. Um, but he wanted me to get it for his birthday, so he literally wants me to Venmo him $30 as a reimbursement for a game he already bought as his birthday present. And I told him that's the lamest thing I've ever heard. Um, comment if you agree, because it is. <laughs> um, so right now I am going to try and find something to give him in addition to that. So I'm going right now to Barnes & Noble because I want to try and find him a game because I think like one year into dating, we started this tradition, um, like one year into dating where we get each other, one of the gifts that we give each other for our birthdays is a game. We really love board games and video games, but like we always get each other a board game or like a card game of some type um, because we want to build up our collection of games for when we move in together and live together so that like we can have game nights all the time with our friends and family and just because we really enjoy playing them so I'm gonna go to Barnes and Noble and try and find a game usually I do a lot of research and I find an interesting game and I look it up online ahead of time but I am so behind schedule and he's gonna watch this and be like oh it's fine um, but it's true I'm so behind schedule and I don't know what to do so I'm gonna just go and look at some of the games and see if they have anything that catches my attention. So that's my update. Happy freaking Thursday. Super, it's really nice out today, nice and warm. Uh, I'll show you guys what I bought when I get back to my house. So yeah. Operation, go into Barnes and Noble and just get what I'm looking for and not buy a hundred books. It's time for a haul. Um, let's do a mini haul of the things that I got today. So I went to Target and Bath and Body Works with my mom. And then I had to drop her off so she could do some work stuff. After that, I went to Barnes & Noble to get Alexander his birthday present, as I was telling you, in the car. So I'm going to show you what I got because I got some cute stuff. So first things first. I got some new clothes from Target. Uh, I didn't get to try them on, so I'm just gonna have to try them on and see uh, how they fit and if I have to return them because obviously you can't go into fitting rooms right now. But I went to Target to get some more comfy summer clothes because I feel like I have like no clothes that fit me anymore. Um, one of the reasons I'm trying to be healthy and active, but guys, my butt hurts so bad today after that five mile bike ride every time i sit down i'm sitting on a pillow right now just because i'm like wow that hurt so it wasn't the best but it's okay so i'm gonna show you some of the stuff i got okay so first things first i got a concealer because i'm running out of concealer i use maybelline fit me concealer in the shade 10 and then i got this little outfit it's a um like a olive green tea olive green and like maroon are like some of my favorite colors to wear and then i got these little shorts to match so i thought that would be like a cute outfit um i think this was eight dollars and these shorts were 20 bucks and then i was not planning to get this i was like i'm just gonna get like two pairs of shorts um, but like they didn't have any shorts in like appropriate sizes. It was all extra smalls and extra larges like they had been wiped out um, Everyone must have gone shopping this past weekend But anyway, I walked in and Target has this adorable little pride month display and I Immediately saw this and was like I have to get that so I don't have any like rainbow themed clothing and I thought that it was so appropriate for this month and also um, I'll get into this in a little bit, but I'm participating in the Black Queer Readathon hosted by uh, Jesse from Bowties and Books, which actually starts tomorrow, so I have to get my freaking shiz together. Um, but I saw this and I really, really wanted it. So for those of you who know me, even those who know me might not know this, but bears are some of my favorite animals. Actually, they are my favorite animal. I also really love horses and tigers, but bears, I just connect 
spiritually and emotionally with the image of a bear for many many reasons um so i saw this and i just thought it was the cutest thing in the world this one is 13 bucks and then the last thing that i got clothing wise is this dress so um it's kind of hard to show you when i'm sitting down but it's basically just a long um floor length number and it kind of reminds me of like little house on the prairie vibes and i just saw it and i was like you know what i don't own anything like that and dresses are just so comfortable i love dresses and skirts especially in the summer and this is 34 dollars. and it also comes in like this deeper blue if you're interested and i think a white uh so those are the clothes that i bought and then the other thing i went to bath and body works my mom wanted to get um a new candle like a plug-in air freshener and i got a candle this is like the most adult purchase I think I've ever made in my entire life. I never buy candles, but I saw this one and I was just like, I need that in my life. It's lavender vanilla. It smells incredible. <sighs> yeah, that's it. That's the essence of life right there. I love lavender, the smell and the color of lavender. Um, it's so relaxing. This was kind of expensive, but they were 50% off, so. I don't know how long that's gonna last for but bath and body works 50 percent off three wick select three wick candles hashtag not sponsored and then i went to barnes and noble because i had to get alexander a game and i did find a game and i did get him one other little thing but i'm not gonna show them um because he's probably gonna see this footage before because he helps before his birthday because he helps me edit so we'll see but i will include a clip of him showing off what he gets for his birthday but when i went into barnes and noble i told myself i wasn't gonna buy anything for myself and i failed that mission <laughs> i knew it was going to happen i originally i looked for dream so dark by ellen mckinney which is the sequel to a blade so black and they didn't have it which is disappointing but I can go to other stores or like find it online so I was just like all right I'm gonna settle for that I have a lot of classics on my TBR but there are two slash three classics in particular that have been really just like nagging at me and like oh read me read me um the first one is Alice ever since I read the Alice, Alice in Wonderland retelling by McKitty I've been wanting to read Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll but the second one is the Odyssey well, the Iliad and the Odyssey. That's why I said it's kind of two. Oh, guys, look at how gorgeous this is. So it's a bind up of the Iliad and the Odyssey by Homer. Like, look at this, guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, like the gold pages. We've got another, like one of those little bookmark things this is what the back looks like. So I really want to read the Iliad and the Odyssey because I am obsessed with mythology. I love myth and lore. I have a lot of other books on myth and lore, um, specifically Celtic mythology I'm really into, but like this is a very classic Greek mythology story and I feel like a fraud for saying that I love mythology and never having read this in its entirety. I read parts of the Odyssey in ninth grade, but I never actually read the whole thing and I haven't read the Iliad and I just really want to. I think it's going to be a really great time. My other books came, so I have a second unboxing for you guys so these are the two other books that i got from the lip bar which um is a black owned bookstore in the bronx i'm gonna cry guys i just i can't so um as i said in a couple uh, in both of my previous vlogs i am engaging in this push to diversify my shelf and diversify my reading experience um, so that I can understand other people's perspectives better and just grow as a reader and a person. The two books that I have here are part of that process and I'm so excited for both of these. So the first one I got is If They Come For Us and it is a poetry collection by Fatima Asgar. I hope I said that right. This is a short collection of poems um, and it says in here that this soulful debut poetry collection captures the experiences of being a young Pakistani Muslim woman in contemporary America. So I'm really, really excited for this. I don't read a lot of poetry because I'm not the best at reading poetry. I just feel like I'm kind of like dense about poetry, but 
I think that I'm really gonna love this and I think it is going to I just I'm excited to engage with these emotions and feel and start to broaden my understanding of what it could mean to be a Pakistani Muslim American girl. This is gonna be so beautiful. The cover is stunning. I love this cover, like lavender and the flowers and these beautiful women and they have their arms interlocked. It just looks like so, it like such an empowering and moving text. I feel like this is gonna make me cry and I kind of love that. So yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> the second book that I got is Conjure Women by Afia Adakora, I think. This, I basically, I've seen it floating around in different lists of recommendations, but honestly, I bought this because I have a link to this list in the highlight on my Instagram. Um, it's like, I think, 80 plus books by Black authors you need to read, and I was just flipping through it to like build up my Goodreads list and like get some um, books ordered. I got this one immediately because the person who wrote that article and this a person on the back compares Ada Cora's writing to that of Toni Morrison and I just I love Toni Morrison's writing. Toni Morrison is a goddess. She is such a beautiful woman, a beautiful soul, and I love her writing and I still have a lot of her writing to read which is nice but the fact that we have someone who is alive and writing today that writes in a similar style I'm really interested to engage with this style and see how it is similar to Morrison the blurby blurb blurb <laughs> the blurby thing um, on the inside says a mother and daughter with a shared talent for healing and conjuring curses are at the heart of this dazzling first novel so I like that there's some like witchy or magic vibes so yeah conjure women that is my haul slash unboxing update um for the rest of the day i'm gonna go to alexander's we're gonna play some pokemon and then we'll see where the day takes us i do need to get some reading in and i am starting um a readathon tomorrow so we'll see <laughs> are ever feeling stressed this tea will work wonders for you i promise it's from the brand yogi i hauled it in my earlier clip if you want to see what the box looks like but it's so good and there's these cute little inspirational messages on them how adorable hey everybody i've got my new pride shirt on so cute just did my makeup um and now i am going to start doing some reading for the day but first i wanted to pop on and say happy juneteenth <laughs> hi happy boy hey there it's saturday we are about to go to Alexander's nephew's birthday party. He's turning one today. Well, I don't think today's his birthday. We established that, right? Yeah, it's not. No, but we're celebrating his first birthday because he's about to turn one. And he's the cutest thing in the world. We love him. And I'm pretending that he's my nephew because I really want a nephew and I don't have one. So, yeah, we're going to his birthday party. And then tomorrow, it's his birthday dun 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 the big <laughs> two one hello everyone say happy birthday in the comments alexander turns 21 today so exciting he finally caught up to me um i'm six months older than him so I always make fun of him for being the baby, but he's gonna quickly run down all of the gifts he got for his birthday for you guys. Okay, let us know what you got for your birthday. Do a birthday gift haul for us. <laughs> okay, so uh, the funniest thing I wanted, top of my list, was a bike. Yes. So I got a bike. A nice bike so we can go on trails and yeah, stuff together. Be awesome. Um, what kind Maddie is it? A red bike? Or... Yeah, it's a red and black. I told them about yeah. the game thing that we do already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we love that. So, um, I'm big into, like, designing logos right now, so she got me, uh, 
the logo game that yeah that's what it's called yeah we played it it's super fun yeah easy it's like questions about like brands and like mm -hmm. you look at some of them have pictures but it's kind of just like a trivia game all about yeah. like brands and it was really fun so that's good. We did not um, win though. No, we came <laughs> his, in last. <laughs> his parent, no, we came second to last. Yeah, Nick and Grace were behind us, but his parents Very whipped good. us. Yeah. Um. Then. Yes. She knows me so well. She got me Pokemon cards. Gen eight Pokemon cards. Gen no eight less. Pokemon cards. So you know, we'll run you through these. He, yeah, first yeah. things first, he got thing. my second favorite Pokemon ever, as per the clip in the earlier vlog, Galvantula. Yeah, we got Galvantula. Here's my favorite one we got, Senescorch. You see Super that? Super sick, yeah. Uh, we got a few of these, uh, you know, stuff like that. Pinkurchin, I think that's how you say it. I say Pinchurchin, but he but thinks that's no not there, correct. But there's no H there, so that makes no so. sense. But, you know, that's Let us know below how you pronounce that. Yeah, below. Hoot Hoot. <laughs> Throwback, Mudbray, Grookey Gang. Yeah, Grookey. Even though I'm not. Comment down below if you played Pokemon Shield slash Sword, which starter you chose, and whoever, whichever one's more Don't popular wins. Don't even comment wins. unless you took Score Bunny, though. So. No, he was a Score Bunny pick. Yeah. I picked Sobble. Ironically, neither and of us picked ball. Grookey, and that's what you got. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that is awesome tomorrow then, we're going to buy more because he wants yeah, we're more definitely buying more. and then yeah i got a cake in the fridge yeah i make him Made this chocolate eclair food. cake every year yeah. it's super simple and delicious um so yeah 21 good day. super good day hi everybody it is time for a wrap-up clip so this week was very busy for me. I wasn't really anticipating how busy it was going to be, but then by the midway point of the week, I was overwhelmed with getting things together for Father's Day and Alexander's birthday and then his nephew's birthday took up most of the day on Saturday. Not that I'm upset about that. It was great to see him. If I can figure out how to insert a picture I'll put a picture up of us with him he is just the sweetest and happiest little baby it was so fun going to his first birthday party and then yesterday was Alexander's birthday so I spent all of the day or half of the day with my dad and half of the day with him because his birthday fell on Father's Day this year so I ended up only reading I think 380 pages I read 200 pages of A Blade So Black and ended up finishing it five out of five stars I talked about that with you guys I read 50 pages of my Byron biography just for research purposes and then I listened to, I started listening to um, The Vanishing Half. I actually don't even know if I have a clip talking about this because the week was so chaotic and I did a lot on Instagram and I couldn't keep track of what I did on Instagram and what I did here. But on June 19th and 20th, I participated in the Queer Blackathon hosted by Jesse from Bowties and Books here on YouTube. They like I think co-hosted it or just did it together with a few other booktubers I'll have all of their um pages linked down below and also I'll have both of uh Jesse's videos where they give recommendations and where they talk about um the readathon down below if you are just interested because it even though it's over I am still pushing myself um, for a few different reasons to continue to read because first of all the two books that I bought that I wanted to read didn't even get here yet. Also I just feel like it's pride month and we're supporting black lives, black LGBT lives, black trans lives specifically so I really just want to keep up with reading queer black books so that's what I'm gonna do but I want to um, finish The Vanishing Half, which I'm listening to on audiobook. I listened to half of it. I don't know if I, or about half of it. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that. So I listened to half of The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. It's an excellent, excellent book so far. Very intriguing. And then I have two books coming that I'll unbox in the next clip that I'm going to read. And then I'll probably drive into either this one or this one. Both of these, just the covers, the premise, what I've heard about them. I want to read these so, so bad. So we've got so, so so many great books coming up in these next couple of vlogs. Um, I've just been really reading so many good books lately. Um, it's great. It's a great problem to have to have so many books that you don't know which one to pick up next because they're all so good and they're all calling to your 
calling to you. I also decided that I'm going to be posting every Tuesday. My vlogs are going to be live every Tuesday, but thank you so much for everyone who has watched the first few vlogs. I've been having so much fun talking about these books though and showing off all the books that I've bought. Thank you so much again for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying these. Leave comments, suggestions, things that you want to see down below. And thanks so much for watching. Happy reading, happy writing, happy living. Bye.